Cloud. Welcome, welcome everybody. Greg Peterson from Urban Farm U. I am here with Miss Janice. Hello, Janice. Hello, Greg. Good to see you. Right back I am at here. you. I'm here from uh, my little place called Two Piece in a Pod. I'm in the northern area of Phoenix and uh, glad to be here. Nice, nice, nice. nice. So um, we have uh, probably one of the better classes we've ever recorded on drip tape, which is what we're going to be talking. We'll be playing that this evening. And then we'll be taking questions afterwards. And I am sure we will have a, a special offer for your, those of you that are attending live tonight if you want to buy drip tape. So drip tape is my favorite way to water my garden. And um, we also sell drip tape supplies. So I'll just be right up front with you about that. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, if you have questions along the way, please put them in the Q&A section uh, and uh, we will definitely address them once the video is done. Tonight we're talking about drip tape and I mentioned Scott Murray a little earlier today before we started recording. Uh, he's one of my mentors and about a decade ago he turned me on to this thing called drip tape. And drip tape is, uh, well, we'll jump into what it is and isn't here in a minute, but it is absolutely my favorite way to get my garden beds watered and leave it to Janice. She uh, mm -hmm. put her own twist on it. Greg, what is drip tape? All right. First of all, it is not drip irrigation. Drip tape is a lay flat commercial watering system. So that tape you're looking at on the screen there, when it fills up with water, it goes round. And when it empties of water, it goes flat again. That's why they call it lay flat. It is a precision watering system. It puts water exactly where you need it. And it is perfect for home gardeners. So here's the big reasons you want drip tape in your yard. It pressurizes evenly for equal watering. Drip irrigation systems put more water out at the beginning of the system than they do at the end of the system. Drip tape pressurizes evenly before it starts dripping. Hi, so the front of the line of your crops are gonna get watered as much as the back of your system. And uh, so that that's the biggest reason we love it. The laser cut holes self-clean. That means every time the water comes on, any salts that build up, they wash away. The holes are spaced evenly, and they're so they're watering every six, eight, ten, or twelve inches along there. So you can count on that water being even. It's easy. So it's like Tinker Toys to install and repair. It'll save you at least 50% on water, probably more. It helps reduce your weed growth by keeping the water where you want it. And you can install it up to 600 linear feet for even pressure. If you have to go more than 600 linear feet, you put in different zones. Yes, Janice. I was going to say one other thing that I just realized is that we have longer lifespan of drip tape than some of the other options that are out there, like soaker hoses. Mm -hmm. They last longer. Yeah, exactly. And I used to use drip tape for five to seven years in the sun in Phoenix at the urban farm. Here's a few limitations. You need to put it in straight. It can't, you can't curb it or make it turn a corner. It has to be straight. So that's something we just have to work around. Animals will and can chew holes in the tape. I've had a couple of situations where that's happened. Some people will put water out for the animals. You can also bury it in mulch, bury the tape in mulch, and it works really well that, that way as well. It is easy to repair, so you do have to pay attention to it. If, you, uh, you know, if you're digging in your garden, I can't tell you how many times I've been digging out in the garden and I put the pitchfork right through it. But if you do, it's so easy to fix. It is. We have a simple connector that... Uh, helps fix that. 
So this is what we're going to cover in the next 20 minutes or so, the install process. And the way this goes, and we'll explain all of this, the way this goes is you've got your water supply, your spigot, your pipe coming in. You put a timer in place. This turns on and off to, so that it automates. There's a valve. The valve controls the water. Number four is the most important thing you need to know about a drip tape system, and that is that it needs a 10 PSI pressure reducer in place. Absolutely, you cannot go without that. Uh, then you go, you put in your 5 8 poly to garden bed, that's plastic piping. We'll show you pictures of that. And then you lay out your drip tape. I think we're gonna change number five is 5 8 inch poly tubing to destination because it's not just garden beds. Got it. All right, so here we have the water supply. It's a spigot. Uh, these are both spigots. Uh, sometimes you can direct connect to uh, underground PVC. Uh, this is a full pressure. And if you are in the city or on a well, it's likely your PSI coming out of this or pounds per square inch is around 50 to 70 PSI. This will blow the socks off of your drip tape. And uh, I'm going to say this a lot tonight because I've had people try drip tape without it and you absolutely need it. So, and then on the right, we're going to talk about this in a little while on the right is a chlorine filter. That, I wanted to see, take a look at this, this spigot on the right. Um, if you're, as you're going to be creating some systems, some home systems, if you're at a 40 degree, five degree angle coming out with your spigot, a simple, another 45 degree angle uh, diverter can give you your 90 degree down option. So that's the water source. Then there's the timer. This is four different timers. A timer basically is the clock that turns the water valve on and off. You don't have to have a timer. If you're doing this manually, uh, you can just hook a hose up to it and turn it on. And in that case, you would be the timer. And that'd probably be your, your watch or whatever device you use to set your clock. Exactly. So this is four different examples of timer. We're gonna talk about the top center one here in a little while. And the thing about timers is, is they can be set to multiple zones. The Lawn Genie on the left will hook up to six different valves, which gives us six different zones we can send water to. So when the I- The same with the X-Core, that'll do six. Mm -hmm. um, the Orbit at the bottom, the Beehive, I believe that one can go up to eight. All right, nice. So what and I it's did- also Wi-Fi. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, they do make them that way now, don't they? Yeah. So the one on the left, the Lawn Genie, what I did with that when I was at the urban farm, I had two zones out in the front yard. And each zone is connected with a, with a wire coming off of the Lawn Genie to a valve. And the valves look like this. So this, that single valve there on the left, was one that was at the urban farm. It was one of the zones in the front yard. And then you can see the one in the middle. This is a picture from Janice's place. That is two different valves. So that is sending water to two different places. Now these kind of valves need a timer to hook up to. The timer valve combo on the right, they are together. So the water goes into it and comes out of it. And now the it reason why the, the difference between the one on the right is that one is specifically for an area that doesn't have electricity because the single valves mm. are usually controlled by a timer that needs some sort of electrical uh, support to be able to control the timer. If you do not have electricity in an area and you just have a water supply, some batteries and one of these orbits, which you can get with one, two, that one there has three um, zones. Mm -hmm. um, you can get it up to four, I think. Oh, perfect. All right, so that's the valves. We have the water source, the timers, the valves. Here is the very, very, very important 10 PSI pressure reducer. Now we sell these. The water flow goes that way. This is imperative in the system. I had one of our people email me with a picture this week 
that showed the drip tape blown out. And I said, do you have a 10 PSI pressure reducer in place? And she turns out she didn't. So these are very important. If you are talking to anybody, even somebody in the irrigation stores or, or the big box stores, if they tell you that your valve is can be controlled to set the pressure, that's not enough. You mm -hmm. definitely want to make sure that it doesn't go above 10 PSI. And the only way to do that is with this simple, simple tool. Yep, exactly. Now it is threaded on both sides. And given we don't know, and we sell the 10 PSI pressure reducer, but given we don't know how and you're going to hook it up because everybody that hooks them up differently, we don't have the part. So what we suggest you do is you buy, if you get one of our bundles from us, you take the 10 PSI reducer to the hardware store and you tell them what you want to do and they'll sell you the thready parts to go in between because there's because so many different iterations of it. Yeah, and it'll make sure that by getting that way, you're going to get the right little part to connect this to what your system is. This is one of the ones I had at the urban farm. Bottom left, that's water coming in. Then you have your automatic watering valve. And what I want you to notice, that 10 PSI pressure reducer is after the valve. If you put the 10 PSI pressure reducer before the valve, it will mess up the valve. So it has to go after, after the valve goes the pressure reducer. And what that gets you is 10 PSI going to your garden or wherever else you send it. Another way of doing it is having multiple valves and having a single pressure reducer. Mm -hmm. So the one in the middle here, this is three valves going off to the right. This is actually a backward picture, so I can do this. We've got water coming in from the source. Then we've got the individual watering valves, which are currently in this picture not hooked up to the timer. So that's why the electrical cords are just tied right there. We've got one zone that needed a pressure reducer for the drip tape. So that one zone, the black um, pipe in the back, the black poly tube, is going with the PSI to, it's actually to my orchard, not to the garden. Right. So the other two valves that we're looking at are for drip irrigation systems, not for yes. drip tape, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, I actually have the, the poly tubing shooting off the top and the bottom ones are going to individual zones in my yard that are having some sort of drip irrigation, but not drip tape. We are going to install the, the white PVC tube on the right is what is going to be a fourth zone. Oh, but I wanted amazing. to call attention here on um, just clicked on the picture there. There's a shut off ball valve. I will okay. tell you when you're putting in your valves, if you can put in extra shut off valves in your system before you're doing your actual zoning of your valves, mm -hmm. the ball valve gave me the opportunity to make changes and additions without having to shut off the whole water. The more you can put those in, the better. Exactly. And then I've got this nice clear space up on the top for my future timer, which as soon as I get my electricity back there, then I'll set that up. And the white pipe is my future fourth zone. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm going back and I am manually controlling this to set it up the way I want for my irrigation. But I will be having a timer installed shortly. This is a uh, filter valve pressure reducer all together. Was the uh... The water from the source, then you have your chlorine filter and the timer and valve combo and 10 PSA water coming out. The chlorine filter would have been better to have it after the timer. I'm putting a little bit of high pressure. If this was controlled with a, I mean, I have a spigot going into this setup, so I don't have full pressure going into the chlorine filter, but I didn't have the space to have the chlorine filter after the valves. So yes, it reduces the life of the chlorine filter slightly, but I opted for that so that I could have room for the 10 PSI reducers. Now we have drip tape on the right. It's a flat tape. And on the left is poly tubing. The poly tubing is a harder tubing. The poly tubing is what's going to be taking you from all of the stuff we just talked about to your garden beds. It's basically the step, if you're planning irrigation, 
the first choice is very hard PVC pipe, and that gets your, your water from your source to your location in a straight line. If you need to bend going around your yard and your trees and for regular drip irrigation, polytubing is a common tool. You, you find it in most big box stores. But the drip tape has a very specific purpose, amazing benefits. We wanted to identify them so that you could see the difference while we're talking. And also in the rest of the slides, we're going to have polytubing highlighted in red and drip tape highlighted in blue to help you identify the difference. The install process goes like this. Install the valve, the timer, and the pressure reducer, and then you're going to run the 5 8 polytubing to the destination beds. And you know, you can run it 50 or 100 feet out to your garden beds if you need to. In the 5 8 tubing, you can put T's, you can put elbows, you can put on-off valves for beds. We've got a picture of that here in a little while. I want to step in here. If you're doing polytubing to a specific zone that is going to have drip tape, do not put any drip irrigation on the same zone. Don't put the don't put drip irrigation on your drip tape system. And then there's optional on-off valves at the entry to the garden beds. We should have a picture for you of that in a little while. Uh, like I said, you lay the polytubing across the head of the garden bed. You'll see pictures of that coming up. And then you lay out your drip tape down the length of your garden bed. And usually we do one foot apart on the drip tape lines. You know, if you have a poly at the head of the bed and you can go eight, eight inches apart, 12 inches apart, but usually 12 inches is good. All right, here's your poly tubing with the on off valves. This is a system that I used to have at the urban farm with a hose end connector. So this one, I just used to hook a hose up to it. Remember, if you're going to drip tape, you have to put the 10 PSI pressure reducer. So you, you got the 10 PSI reduced water coming into the source. You got a T, you got two on-off valves. What you can do with the on-off valves is uh, if you can put on the same zone, you can put different beds. And if you have a, a fallow bed, you just turn off that bed. All right, and when we say lay the poly tubing across the head of the bed, this is what it looks like. You're going to see the video here in a minute of the uh, where the picture from the left came from. Those look like they're about eight inches apart. So the poly tubing has the orange arrow pointing at it, and the drip tape is running off to the left in both pictures. Now, having this picture here gives you options. Because if your garden bed is already installed, you can run your polytubing up the side, across the side. Of the, if it's down in a low bed, you can just run the polytube next to it. If you're in the process of building your garden bed, or if you have the opportunity to, you can actually run your polytubing straight up in underneath and up into the end of your bed, which is what the picture on the right is. I wanted to have a multiple demonstrations of different ways that things can be done. So in my raised bed, I have the poly tube snuck up under the edge and run up the bottom through the top and over to the end. And then we added an end cap. And this is one that my, my guy uh, found at the local hardware store and he threw this on the end. This is a simple way to close the end of the 5 8 inch poly or we get Greg's way. Thing over and use a piece of red wire. I use the red wire. Uh, I like it because it stands out. So that's a super simple way. Next, I'm going to lay out the drip tape. And there's a special tool that punches the poly tubing. Picture on the right is the connector. Of it's called a poly to drip barb, or we just call it a barb. Barb, yes. And the bottom is the one that inserts into the poly tubing. And the top is where you attach your drip tape. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Once you punch the barb, you're going to cut your drip tape to length and leave six inches on the end for folding it off. And yes, yeah, so um, when we're going to talk about this later, you can do a fold to secure the end of your drip tape, or you can end up doing an end cap on that as well. And this is how you're going to connect the drip line. So you've got your poly tubing on the left, your barb in the middle, 
and your drip tape on the right. You insert it in, and this is a twist. So you push the uh, drip tape all the way in, and then you twist it counterclockwise, and it cinches down on the drip tape. Yeah, there's a, uh, a spinning part to the barb. So you spin it all the way close to the poly tube, slide the, the drip tape on, and then you twist it out so that it grabs a hold of the drip tape, and you twist it all the way out so it's nice and secure. And if it drips a little bit there, that's fine. You just plant the plant there. Now, Greg, I really think that this particular slide is like the beginning of a dance move. We're going to do the drip tape <laughs> end fold. We're going to double bend <laughs> at the drip tape, and then we're going to slip on a piece of drip right. tape to secure. Great. So, the, yes, absolutely. I love that, Janice. At the end of your drip tape, so this is six foot, 12 foot, however long your bed is, you're going to take a three inch piece of the drip tape. You're going to bend it once. You're going to fold it over once. You're going to fold it over twice. You're going to fold it over three times. So you get it done like that. And then you're going to, technical term, you're going to scrunch the end. I love scrunching. And you're going to slide that three inch piece over it. So that you what just you open end, it up and it, it will slide in. Yep, exactly. And you just slide on it right that. And the next slide will show us what it looks like. It is really that simple. And then what I used to do at the urban farm is I put a stake in the ground and use that red wire again to lash it. You just bend the drip tape at the end and use the red wire to lash it to the stake. And then the other thing we do is about every six feet, you want to take a, a loop of the wire just a U-shaped piece of the wire and push that in the ground to hold the drip tape in place. Because as it warms up and cools off during the day, what will happen is it'll creep a little bit. And this is our end goal. This is a picture from Murray Farms. And the drip tape is coming into the bed from closest to us. See, Lemonade said, I have a three foot wide raised bed, so we'll need two tapes per bed. Usually on a, th this is a three foot wide bed here you put three tapes and a four foot usually put four maybe five depending on what you're growing so it's something you get to play with now what i love this is murray farms is a real live production farm and he's using this out in his field his actual growing area where he's producing crops and then he's using it for his own personal gardens too so yeah. That's a cool video. Hey, it's Greg Peterson from the Urban Farm coming to you from Longevity Gardens with Jake Mace. Welcome, Jake. Welcome to my place. Actually, you should welcome me, exactly. <laughs> Greg, we just did a video where we set up this raised bed and filled it with soil, the exact soil mix that I use. Yep. Folks can get the link to that in the description or comments below. But now, what are we doing? Nice. So, I get this question a lot. People want to know about drip tape. This is not drip irrigation. This is drip tape. This is what farmers use. Okay. And the cool thing about drip tape is that the, it's pressurized evenly throughout the system. Hmm. The problem we get a lot with drip irrigation is that the pressure at the beginning of the system is different Is different than the pressure at the end of the system. So and you usually get, at the end, it's a lot lower pressure. Yes, exactly. And those plants get don't get the water. Right, exactly. So basically what we have here is we have our incoming uh, 5 8 inch pipe. And that comes from, from the grid. So this sure. is after somebody's already got the water coming from the grid to their raised bed. Exactly. And you're not going to tie this pipe into a drip tape system. Right. So we're just going to slip it on here. Now, interesting thing, this pipe gets really stiff. Mm. So if you're doing it and it's too hard to get it together. Or if you're doing 100 of them at once. Or if you're doing 100 of them at once, exactly. Go get a mug of hot water, okay. boil water, and you can soak the end in hot water and it softens it up so nicely. Now we have the water coming in. Okay. We haven't sealed off the other end of this guy, so we have to seal off this other end. Now they sell attachments for the end pieces. So you could hook up an attachment that will go to another bed. Exactly, so you can just chain them on. Or if this is the end of your system, you can cap it off. And here's how I cap it off. It's really simple. You just fold it. I just fold it over. I mean, those end caps can be expensive. They can add up if you're doing 100 of them. So exactly. That'll save you hundreds of dollars. Right, so one of the things that I use, I use this pink wire. Hmm. And it, this is just pink electrical wire. Mm -hmm. And I use it 
instead of instead of one of these instead of one of these well these cost a lot of money they do these are you can buy in a big roll right you just buy this by the roll we'll actually have it this cut as our pop-up nursery as well oh, okay. but here's the reason I use them put that in the ground next to it I know for a fact that over time that disappears that disappears right and the pink's never going to disappear so you can see it so you can do adjustments and improvements exactly and so fixings. I've, I've gone to using only this at the urban farm now I've gotten rid of all the other wires and everything so take that wrap it around there real good for me okay like this yep just and this way twist it yep twist it tight as you can tight that that works there's really no wrong way to do it and then kind of tw twirly it maybe yeah there we and go just start making the pressure high right yeah yeah exactly you're good so this is what it looks like, Greg. It's like super flat, and it's not sticky like tape. tape. No. It's just a flat piece of irrigation line. They actually call it lay flat tape. Okay, lay and flat what, tape. And what happens when it fills with water is it, you know, it fills up to a tube. Right. And then every eight inches, there, in this particular one, every eight inches there's a hole. Wow, okay. And that hole That's lets water out. to let the appropriate amount of water out. Right. So it'll put, you know, if you put it on for 20 or 30 minutes, it'll put a ring of water around your plant right there. Hmm, nice. This is really interesting the way the, the connectors work. Mm -hmm. So this connector is going to go into this pipe right here. The regular 5 The regular 5 eighths, exactly. We're going to take the drip tape and we're going to put it on there while this is open. And then we're going to kink it closed. And what it's doing is it's cinching over that drip tape. And locking it on. Then locking it on. Ooh, nice. Yeah, isn't that nice? It's pretty good. Okay, so cool. now we've got the first piece done. Okay. Okay. The next thing we need to do is we need to attach it in here. Which you could just take some sort of nail, but this is a much better tool for that. Yeah, this is a seven dollar tool. It just pokes a hole in the pipe. Okay. There we go. And then we're gonna work this in there. Again, uh, a jar of hot water or a mug of hot water will help. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the other end here. So the water comes through this main line. Main line. It will, some of the water goes in this strip tape, yep. and some of the water goes in this strip tape. Yeah, exactly. Craig, I know you, and I know that you like to garden economically. Yes. Which means on the cheap. Yep. But still effectively. <laughs> Absolutely. So you figured out some ways to cut costs and keep the cost low with this, which is using a stick or a stake and a unique Greg Peterson urban farm method. Yeah, well, actually, so I got this us. from Scott Murray, so oh. I, won't, I won't claim this one. I've got this extra here. I'm going to cut it off with a few inches on the end. All right. Now, and we take an extra piece of this. Okay. We'll need about four inches. Okay. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. And all we're going to do is we're going to fold it once. We're going to fold it twice. You're going to open that up. And you're going to slide it over the end here. So it just, you folded this part and now it just stuffs in there to keep it folded. Yep. Basically. There you go. I mean, you yeah. just slide it on. Oh, that's cool. So that's yeah. like totally like rustic, you know. There you go. That's like an every man's way of doing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And now no water will get through there. Right. Yeah. So grab the stake now. All right. You're going to put the stake in the ground. And, and then what we're going to do is we're going to lash this and lash this with these guys with those guys so go so ahead and i'll do this one you do that one all right that? cool and we just fold this up and just yep. tie it around like there this, you right? go just like that i've been to your house here at the urban farm and you've got all your garden grown with this method i do this is what i love so and then the other the last thing we do so we stake them at the end down here like this, mm -hmm. okay? The stakes hold them taut, because you know as they heat up, they'll expand and contract and like that, and sure. this way they don't move down at the ends. And then I'll use my U-shaped wire, just like so. To, to make it the shape you want it. Yeah. And now what you've done is you've taken this main line and you've tied it into my garden that right. already has irrigation to it. Exactly. For this video, so we can turn this on. It should work for the audience watching. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, look at that. There it goes. It's working good. Now yep. they're kind of like a, a tube. Yep. And the water yeah. is just coming through. And now yep. the plants that we plant in this raised bed will find that water as they grow. Exactly. I like it. And I found that they last for a very long time. That's the thing. People always um, make you nervous, make you think that your irrigation is not going to last or it's going to get clogged. But right. you found that this lasts and does not get clogged. The batch in my front yard mm -hmm. has been there for like five years and it's still going great and the other thing is because of the way they laser cut them 
they don't clog. Hmm. So when it pushes another batch of water through it, it clears out the it clears out the holes, so the holes just don't clog. Because sometimes some minerals can clog it up, but yeah. you found that this doesn't happen. It doesn't happen here. Wow, that's cool. cool. And I'll be we'll be setting up uh, bundles of drip tape, so it'll come with drip tape. It'll come with uh, the end pieces and the on-off valves. So like a pre a pre thought out system. A pre thought out system. Yeah. That's great. Thanks for coming over. Yep. People are always concerned and have questions Good about part. how to irrigate their garden. Yeah, and this is a great great solution. Awesome, awesome. You know that video is how many years old now and it hasn't aged right yeah exactly that's and that's why i like playing it because i you know we explained everything up to that point and then we just jumped in with this video and it it shows it real time so thank and you jake how, and uh and that and at that point the your front yard irrigation drip tape irrigation had been in place for five years at least it was still great after that for another what five years, years before you moved so now let's go to thinking outside the garden mm -hmm. bot greg calls it the janice effect um so and what, that, I, and what that means is janice always takes something from that we're doing and makes it better <laughs> which i love i am obligated to let my brain go and sometimes just unable to stay sane and one of the things i had was uh, a concern with my clay soil and the fact that clay soil has the uh, a slow draining capacity and I really needed to get water over in an, a very large space in my backyard and I didn't want to keep having doing bubblers and, and everything I wanted it to go slow and wide so that went for me instantaneously drip tape. I want to put drip tape over the nice large section of my orchard so that I could water my trees slow and over the whole space because I was also growing stuff under my trees everywhere in the orchard. So I opted to try this and what I did was I took the poly tube to the short end of my orchard area which was like the back third of my yard and I went just across the short end. And then off of that, I put in barbs and I ran barbs down so that I could have the entire 60 foot length of my backyard covered in drip tape, which means I could put up to sit, I could put up to 10 60 foot lengths and still be okay on this one zone. I didn't have 10, I think I only had eight, but I'm doing great. So these pictures here are pictures of the drip tape as it snakes across part of my orchard. And as you can see, I have them uh, on either side of the trees going the lengthwise across the orchard. In some places, I had them about 18 inches apart, maybe in a little bit wider, the zones just depending on where it fit for my where my trees are. My trees are somewhat in a straight line, but not completely. So it worked very well with the linear version, the linear needs of the drip tape. And when I turn it on, I can turn it on a nice slow drip. It'll feed the whole section. And I run it because of the way that my tape, my soil is so clayey. I will run it for four or five hours and then let it go, turn it off. And the next day or two days, I will do it again. And that way I get a good flood type of irrigation method on my yard, but in a slow method that supports all the trees. And all of these pictures here are on my yard before I put down another layer of mulch. My drip tape is visible if I pull the mulch back. If I don't pull the mulch back, it is protected under a layer of mulch. You can't see it right now. Again, here's the end of the line. The drip tape went right up next to a tree and this volunteer artichoke plant who was very happy. And now I was gonna, I ran outside to take more pictures for y'all to show you what was looking for. And I laughed at myself because you can't see any of the drip tape. It's all covered in mulch, this nice, beautiful woody mulch. This is a picture looking from the west side going east and you can see how the drip tape just kind of snakes down between the trees and happy flowers so that was my tree version 
This is Murray Farms. He is an organic farmer who grows food and sells it. He has the drip tape lines set up like this. So he's got two rows of his crop and he will just turn it on and take care of his whole section there. And you can see the stakes that he has at the end. So this is when you can actually see everything and not have it in between the growing season where everything's growing up. But once the plants grow and take their growth spurts, you won't be able to see the drip tape because they'll be protected by all the green. What we do have for you and what Janice and I have perfected over the past five or six years is what we call our drip tape starter kit. And um, can you tell us what's in this kit, Janice? Well, you know, when we were starting to put it together, we tried to figure out what was going to be needed for an average garden. So we started with a generous idea of a four foot by 25 foot garden bed. And this is what you would need. Um, most people do not have a four foot by 25 foot, but they do have something a little smaller, a little narrower, maybe longer, but this will work. With, what, with that, you would need maybe five barbs. Um, with, we threw in one uh, repair coupling and 100 feet of drip tape and the essential pressure reducer. You get all of that and drip tape instructions. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. There you go. And that all comes together. So we'd sell it as a drip tape kit that comes with all the parts you need, or we sell them as individual parts. What we have available is the stuff that's hard to get a hold of. The stuff that's easy to get a hold of, like the poly tubing. Which is also really bulky to ship. Yeah, just the parts that are a little challenging to find. We got it together. So we've got a hundred feet of drip tape. You cut to you fit your needs, five barbs. But if you need more, because Maybe you have two garden beds and they're half the size of what you would need. You still already have the 100 feet of drip tape. You just buy some extra barbs. But then you're only needing, you know, adding on what you need to customize what you need for your set. You might not need an extra PSI reducer. But if you do, let's get you just one instead of having to buy a whole starter kit. Yeah, exactly. And uh, if you spend $50, or more by the last day of the month we'll throw in an extra five of the poly barbs so you'll have extra poly barbs Ta -da. So, there you go and the next slide so we have we have something really important to talk about next and that is these chlorine filters what is chlorine for chlorine is for killing microorganisms which is great for our drinking water especially considering how much of our drinking water is running through city pipes they need to keep it clean exactly so that's that's good thing right there however it's notoriously bad for soil and there's a healthy soil has five components if you've been in any of my classes over the past 10 years i talk about this in ignosium the five components are dirt airspace water or moisture organic matter and everything that's alive in the soil when you add chlorine to your garden beds that chlorine kills the microbes in the soil. So what we have to do is we have to take out that chlorine out of the water. We have one solution for your spigots and for your drip irrigation systems. This is the filter that we have available. Um, KDF filters KD are so popular. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're, they, what they are known for is reducing and removing contaminants in your water, the pollutants. The most important is uh, the free chlorine. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you can let water sit out and the chlorine will eventually evaporate, uh, you know, it'll process out in the air. However, that's not what's happening with the water you're putting in through your shower or through your hose onto your garden. It just doesn't have the time to completely come out, especially on uh, those times when your city has increased its chlorine load to try and fight some sort of contaminants. But there's also other, you know, toxic heavy metals that are coming through some of our pipes. And these do reduce those up to 99% of water soluble lead can come out in a KDF filter. Really? I did not know That's that. what I'm getting. Uh, that's good. Okay, let's show them a picture of it. You've already seen a couple of pictures of it. So this is the hose ready one on the left. We include brass. So it just goes right on your hose picket or 
the one for your shower or inline irrigation system is on the right. And we have both of those available. Oh my wow. gosh. All right. Boy, do we have a bunch of great questions here. I know. I was like, okay, wait, I'm disappearing. I wanted you, what I was going to text you right as it ended, Janice. We need to make sure that we have enough of the uh, shower filters in the shopping cart. I will take care of that as we speak. Give me a moment. All right, cool. Farmtastic. All right. So Doc Farmer wants to know, can we use the drip tape set up in vegetables in livestock tanks? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, you can. Now you got to make sure that the the bottom of the livestock tank is drilled. And I just installed four of those livestock tanks here at the uh, Goodness Grows Organics in North Carolina. So yes, you can absolutely do that. Now, the drip tape is going to be effective if it's as sort of flat. So you don't want to run the drip tape up the side of the tank and then over the corner. What you want to do is run some PVC up to the top, put a little uh, corner bracket, you know, quarter joint in there, and then run a little PVC line. And then off that PVC line is where you're going to run the two or three uh, drip tape lines. Did that make sense? Could also, well, kind of. It could also be poly. I meant, I'm sorry, poly. That's yeah. exactly what I meant. We so, The red words in the, in the video. Mm -hmm. We want the PV, I'm sorry, the poly, the poly to run up the side of the tank, make a joint, make a corner, and then go a short line across the short end of the board of the of the tank and then from there along the long end the length of the tank is where you're going to put your drip tape there hope you that explained it for you yeah all right let's see here ken wendy wants to know can you do a drip tape system off a hose spigot yes you just need to make sure that your pressure reducer is in place um and let's see here uh we had another question Marge says, my PSI at the meter is 95 PSI. Is a 10 PSI pressure reducer still okay? You have, at 95, your drip tape system would not last two minutes. It'll explode it. It's not a, whether it's okay, Marge. It's absolutely, it has to be that way. So let's see here. Um, I'm just scrolling down through the, Jonathan wants to know where to purchase the system. Uh, I put that in the chat a moment ago. I'll put it back in the chat again. Um, so yeah, we do the free education and then you can, um, uh, support us by buying supplies from us. We appreciate supplies. that. It really does help. Yeah. Um, if you're ordering supplies to be shipped, I'm the one that puts it all together. So uh, you might get a little note from me and a little surprise. Uh, um, Nikki, Sydney, and and Wendy all want to know about use, utilizing this in the wintertime. Oh, uh, Nikki question. says, how does poly tubing and drip tape do in freezing temperatures? Um, Sydney says, I live in Iowa where we have to remove hoses during the winter so they don't freeze. Um, <clears throat> so if y'all don't know it, I lived in Phoenix for 55 years, gardened in Phoenix for 45 years and moved to a cold climate in Asheville, North Carolina about two years ago. And I ran polytubing out to my orchard. And, um, while the polytubing seemed to, to do okay, the poly tubing managed itself quite well. It was the on-off valves that froze. Oh. Um, so the poly tubing will, uh, and the drip tape will do just fine in the cold weather if it's not pressurized. Make sure that it's not pressurized. And um, so, yeah, you can do that. Uh, but the drip tape will, yeah. Trip tape will be just fine. Um, Frankie wants to know, what do you mean when you say KDF filter is hose ready? Uh, the KDF filter is hose ready with brass on it so that you can attach it to a hose spigot 
So you put the KDF filter uh, right onto the hose spigot and then put the connection to your drip tape or garden beds running out to. Do you uh, have a picture of that? Your garden. I don't, uh, I think you do. I will find it. Okay. You know, your video's off, right, Janice? Yeah, it is. I didn't want to be having a funny look on my face while I was focusing on updates. Got it. Can you set up the drip tape system off a hose? Yep, answered that. Um, uh, Carla says, I have extremely hard water of, on clay soil in Montana. Um, the nice thing about the drip tape is that it, it flushes out the solids every time it starts up. Um, we've had really good luck with it self-clearing. So... Yeah, like that. Um, Melissa Melissa says same same kind of thing. Lots of minerals in her water outside the house. Uh, are you saying that the they won't clog the holes in the tape? Yes, um, it's it's interesting how it works. But basically, what happens is every time you turn it on, it flushes the minerals out. It, it's pretty cool because I lived in Arizona for fifty five years. And they, we have very, very hard water. We're in the Arizona. Salt River Basin, so yeah, yeah. it's some seriously, seriously hard water. Hey, all, please, so we don't miss your questions. Please drop them in the um, Q and A. In the Q and A, let's see here. Um, Are you starting? How at the often top? do you? How often do you? Are you starting at the bottom? I'm starting at the bottom of the chat. Don't do that. You just told everybody to go to the Q&A. I know. How often does the chlorine filter need to be changed? We say once a year. Um, Anonymous asks, are there any plastics involved in drip tape? Yes. yes fortunately, um, it's almost all plastic. The only metal would be if you have some, the, the brass on the hose filter, hose ready filter, pretty much. Mary, Mary says, what is the flow rate of the drip tape? That is, I just added that to the website to talk about it. Nice. Let me open it up. It is half a gallon per, um, I just looked that up. Oh, I'm looking at, no wonder. I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking you do that. at the um, chlorine Wendy, filter. Wendy wants to know where to get the chlorine filter. Wendy, we sell the chlorine filters. Um, and we'll get you a copy, uh, a link for that here momentarily. It is, you can find it in our general store um, on the front, on the page, when you, the landing page store.urbanfarm.org, the landing page there will have all the products that we offer and you can see there where, um, what's available, including our filters. Uh, Carla says, do you need a KDF filter for hard, hard water? It is not for hard water. It does not take the hardness out of water. It, uh, the KDF filter takes chlorine and other things we don't want in our water out. Let's see here. Um, I use, Katie says, I use leaf mulch and grass clippings from mulch. Would this clog the holes? Not at all. Not at all. In fact, you can you can bury the drip tape under yes, mulch. Yes, you can bury the drip tape under mulch. Yeah, um, it actually can help in um, areas where there's a lot of hot sun to try and protect it from the the sun. But um, you don't want to bury it where there's weight on it. Yeah. If you're just burying it under the light mulch, then it's great because you've got the, the protection from the sun, um, but not the weight because the weight will impact the ability for it to um, to fill up and, and spread the water. Um, let's see here. Um, does the poly, Nikki wants to know, how does the poly tubing and drip tape handle freezing temps? Oh, we talked about that already in Prescott, Arizona. Um, I didn't, the poly and the drip, I didn't have any problems in the frost here. Um, let's see here. 
Prima wants to know what system do you recommend for watering round felt pots? Uh, I've actually used drip tape on them before if they're close enough. Uh, like if you're uh, growing things out in them, but if you just, if they're, um, if they're just placed around your yard, then that's not going to work. So, yeah. um, I'd like to answer the question about how loud this is. Uh, Kiba Buckley Button asks, hi, Greg and Janice, how much noise does this system make? I'm in a condo enclave trying to figure out if I can use drip tape to advantage. My late husband installed a standard Rainbird controller. It was so noisy. It could be heard a few un units away. Big fine. So, oh, 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 oh. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> You've been answering a bunch. Um, the the noise is going to be uh, the two different places that can create the noise. One could be your timer and the other would be your valve. But the watering system itself is not going to make noise. It is going to be, I love this because I like the peace and quiet. In fact, I even have to set a reminder to myself that I've got the drip tape running because I will have the drip tape running. It takes a, a little noise as it kind of fills up. And then it runs so quietly, I don't even know what's happening. And I have on occasion forgotten that I had it. So if you don't set up a reminder, you might forget it. It's super quiet. Did I get it, Greg? Yeah, no, I was going to say the same thing. I just, <laughs> sometimes, you know me, I get excited. I know. I just, I know. I just put the um, link for the chlorine filters in the uh, chat box, by the way. Yeah. Katie says, are the holes pointed down towards the soil? That may, that, that, Go ahead, Greg. Were you going to say it depends? Huh? Yeah, exactly. Go ahead, yes. Greg. Yes. Down or up. Yes. There's they a reason to... for both. Um, if you wanted to go down the water, we'll just go straight into the soil. You don't have any uh, uh, evaporation that's happening. But um, if you want to uh, monitor and to see how it's doing, then having it come up, you'll see the water bubbling out. But it's the amount of water that comes out is such a dribble that it's not spring. Yeah. Yeah. Wendy says, forgive me, you punch the holes in the tape or is it pre-punched? The drip tape is pre-punched. Pre-cut. Where the poly tubing, and again, the poly tubing is to transmit the water from your spigot to where you want to use your drip tape at. The poly tubing is what you need to punch, Wendy. And we've got a great, great tool for that. I'm going to bring it up on my screen and I'll show you. Um, uh, we found this fabulous little scissor tool that you can use to, to punch the holes in the poly tube because we want a nice round tool, not like a slit. Um, and the, the more round the hole, the better the barb fits in it. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to get it right now. Let's see here. Donna says, do you plan to plant by the holes or you can, or can you add holes? You cannot add holes to the drip tape. So you plant near the holes. The thing is, if you run it long enough, the water will expand out six or eight inches and get, you know, water the whole thing all the way around. So, which is exactly, Okay. What I wanted to create in my yard, which this picture behind me is my orchard. And oh, yeah. what I wanted Hold on, was... hold on, hold on. That's her orchard in the Phoenix metropolitan area in the desert. Yeah. I just wanted to point way. that out. This is my orchard looking from one end to the other. Um, and what I really wanted was uh, to be able to create guilds and a lot of plants underneath the trees. I did not want to have a single tree with a lot of space underneath it that was, uh, you know, dry. I wanted to be able to create a space that had multiple layers of food. And by putting the drip tape, I was able to use the, the, the design of the drip tape because it waters along the whole drip tape to create a space that the whole ground was getting watered where I wanted it. 
And that gave me this blanket coverage, allows my fruit tree roots to grow out everywhere I want it. It allows everything underneath the fruit tree to get watered where I want it. And I didn't have little tiny sprinklers or even even a bubbler which would you know not get where i wanted i'd have to have multiple bubblers and multiple sprinklers and multi i no -uh. drip tape i love it yeah let me show this picture of the um of the tool real quick craig yes, you can please. ask for the next question this is our punch tool right here and Maybe. the poly two Oh, this is our punch tool right here. And the poly tube just slides in right there. And this little silver point there punches a little hole right in where you need it. And it's a good size for the barb because then you take it out and the barb goes right where that hole is. And it does it without crushing or um, slicing a big hole so that the tube doesn't get crushed and the hole is round as opposed to a little cut. I'm This is so good. So good. And All it right, comes in the um, the deluxe kit. Great. So let's see if we can get through a bunch of these questions quick. What about if you are on your own well and not city water? There's no if if you've had your city your well water tested. I'm on a well now as well. Uh, you're fine. You wouldn't have any chlorine in it. But yeah, the KDF filter will take out some of the other minerals and stuff. You can even look up online what KDF does. Um, yeah. Any suggestions for an orchard with grass and mowing in between? No. Bubblers. Yeah, you're going to, this is not an option for an area where you're going to be mowing because the mower will just slice, will just pull that up and no. get caught in it. It is, no, definitely not. Sorry. Mary Mary wants to know, and maybe you can put this on the uh, in the chat. Mary wants to know where on the website can I find the flow rate information? I'm going to have to, Mary, I'm going to have to add it to the site um, after the class here. I'll take a few minutes and add it because I just realized it's not on there. I have to go find my notes. Yes, we'll be recording this and be sending that out tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Donna, how long do you run for an average flower garden? Well, <laughs> well it I depends. Run, yeah, I run my drip tape for one to four hours, depending on the temperature, depending on um, how much water and moisture I have. But I'm trying to get down deep into about two, three feet of soil. Sometimes I'll run it a lot for one day and come back a second day and do it a second day just to make sure because I've got clay soil and I want it to get it deep. But I'm trying to get two, three feet down where the water needs to get. For flowers, you're only looking at six inches, maybe eight inches of roots you can get away with probably 15 minutes, right, Greg? But you're yeah. going to test to make sure. Yeah, it's, you, you, it's something you have to work out. Yeah. You know, because you could be living in the desert. You could be living in Asheville, North Carolina. You could be working with uh, clay soil or sandy soil or really loamy soil. Right. Yeah. Uh, anonymous okay. says... I now use quarter inch poly drip irrigation system with 10 PSI in my raised beds and have a problem with the water running into the aisles before it soaks well into the beds. I've tried both six inch and then 12 inch. Will the drip tape work better? Here's where I think the issue is. The drip system, the quarter inch uh, drip system, it's, it's too fast. The drip tape is slower and it because it comes out in a lot of different spaces, you you got the the drip more slower and even. Um, also, you might have some hydrophobic soil or your uh, your grade might just be too big. Does that make sense, Greg? Send us some pictures. Yeah, yeah you can always send us a picture. Wendy has a couple of questions. Distance between the holes, it's either six or eight inches. Can't remember. Do you remember? Um, and uh, run drip tape at night here in Phoenix. That depends. Um, I used to run it uh, when I was in Phoenix. I used to run it at uh, between four and six a.m. in the morning. Here we go. We've got a uh, six inch spacing mm -hmm. and the flow is 0.46 gallons per hour. There you go. 
Anonymous wants to know, do I need a timer on the KDF filter? You don't need to use a timer on the KDF filter. The timer is simply to, um, so you don't have to remember to go turn on and off your water. Yeah. For some of us, we really need a timer because we get busy, we get distracted, we start looking at something else in our yard, and then we decide we want to plant something, and yeah, some of us need timers. Other people are, they have the, this ability to keep track of it, and they don't need it as much as me, I do. Allie says, I live in a community with an HOA. We have sprinklers set for each home on a clock. Can I somehow hook up the drip hose to the existing sprinkler system for additional food growing garden and the drip tape? Um, yeah, it depends on your system. You're basically, you need a zone on your timer for that. So if you have a zone set up, yes, or, you know, you might have to do a little bit of work around on that. Ali, I live in an HOA too. And the, the timer system that we have came down and then there was, it had different valves. So if you, when the timer system comes down and you have one valve dedicated to the drip tape, that'll work great. Nell says, will crud rough wood chips, sharp puncture crude, drip tape? Crude rough wood chips, puncture drip tape. Um, um, depends. Yeah, it depends how sharp and you know, if you're, I've, I've never had that. Uh, the, the, we have it's some pretty, pretty thick. thick tape. We have 15 millimeter um, tape at the moment. And um, because we've upgraded to a better version and um, it's pretty thick, but it can, if it's got like thorns in it and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Linda says, what's the difference between the starter kit and the deluxe kit? All right. The starter kit comes with a hundred feet of drip tape, five barbs, two repair kits, and a PSI reducer. The deluxe kit has all of that, plus it has the punch tool. It has five more barbs, another uh, pressure reducer, and two um, on-off valves, and the punch tool. Let me see, I got a picture right here. So did I miss anything? Oh, it also has the um, uh, five goof plugs. Five little plugs. So if you if you make a hole and you need to plug it in your poly tube, it has a little goof plug. And there's a Be picture of that on the website. Venus says, I have a 500 foot row of well-established mature arborvitae. Curious if you think drip tape would be a good replacement for drip system that's aging out. Absolutely. That would absolutely work. You know, one of the benefits of drip tape is the beauty of the even water application across the space of the drip tape. And when you have um, multiple plants or close plants next to each other that you want to be able to share the water source, this is the perfect answer. A lot of times you have like a, a big row of a garden that you want to make sure that all your plant, all your vegetables, all your flowers, all your 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 peas, your herbs, whatever they are, you want to make sure they're all getting watered evenly. And that's exactly what this was designed for. We've used it for an alternate purpose with the orchard because in the orchard we want to make sure that the trees are getting the water and the plants between the trees are getting the water. It's the ideal solution we found. Yeah, it really does a good job. Um gauge of electrical wire you know i i think you were using about a 10 or 12 gauge yeah 12 or 14 gauge here's the 14? here's what you need to go go bend look at the hardware store and bend a piece of it you want a good sturdy wire yeah katie says is there a possibility of when the timer turns off the water backs up into your house I think that would really depend on how your plumbing system is set up, but it shouldn't. The water should. Right. Um, okay. The way the water comes, I've got multiple systems set up at my yard. Um, I've got a spigot that comes off the back of my house by my bedroom, and it comes down um, through the water filter, the, the filter itself, into that orbit that divides into multiple uh, zones. 
and the shut off of this is at the orbit unless I turn off the spigot. So the spigot is on all the time. It comes down into the little orbit, multi, you know, battery operated um, valve. And no, it doesn't come back into the house. No. Um, when on the other space that I have, I've got a hard line PVC that goes up the wall and it goes to multiple different valves and the timer itself the, the would be affecting the valves and the water's not going to come back on that either. Um, so I would say unless you've got some really unique plumbing, we can't guarantee you it a hundred percent, but standard yeah. setup, it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Yeah. So one one question left. Marnell, are you in Phoenix? Is Marnie. this the Marnell? Is this the is this the Marnell that I know? Is this Marnie? Marnell I says, I have a <laughs> <Yeah>. hello. <laughs> Hi. I have a horseshoe-shaped vegetable garden. How do you connect the tape to go around corners when you can't curve the actual tape? Um I would say here's an idea. I would say at the curve, the top of the curve that you have, you can run the PV or the poly tube across the tube there and then run the lines out and you can slightly curve the the tube opposite of the way that the um the horseshoe is at so that your lines can come out in that direction from there. What I've so done in the past is at the head of it. <clears throat> I put the poly across the head of it, which is the and curve, then the top of the curve, with the yeah. top curve, and then run yeah. it down toward the bottom of the. Yeah, that's exactly that's what I was saying too. All right, kids. All right, I just got a, uh, an order on my phone. I'm gonna watch. Hey, I want some. <laughs> nice. Wayne and Pat, we got you covered. We'll put right. it in, in the set here. Well, thank you all very much. We'll be sending out the recording on this, the installation video um is in uh, i think it's in customer hub is it not janice yes it and should for be sure in there. it's for sure it's on the uh, shopping cart so let me see in customer um, hub and you up. can you can reach us at uh, greg at urbanfarm.org or janice j-a-n-i-s at urbanfarm.org and you can send us your questions that's what we're here for you know greg this would be um, a good item in the in the tool shed oh yes it would stay be tuned good for that yeah. All right. Let me look really quick before we hang up. No, I'm not looking. My my computer just slowed down to nothing. I think it decided right. that it's at the end of the day. It is 918 here. It's time for me to grab a <sighs> yeah. slice of pizza and head to bed. So it's good to see you again, Greg. Appreciate it. Thank you yep. for joining us. Bye now.